Hi, and welcome to Guru Grit, the channel where I'd like to know a little bit about everything. So I was thinking about that, being versatile and knowledgeable, sort of like a jack of all trades type. And naturally, I thought a Moon Mercury conjunction. This combination, I feel, isn't spoken of enough, and it definitely deserves a little more reflection. And it's pretty fascinating, I have to say. So. What can we say about having a Moon and Mercury conjunction in a birth chart? So let's begin with what they are. So the Moon is one's mind, emotion, you know, if it's unstable, you'll see instability. If it's stable, you'll see stability in the person. It has to do with one's mother. And the Moon is a very shifty satellite. So I equate it to a celestial body that has the ability to move things. That's the best way I can really put it into words. When I see it, I feel it, I know it circulates something, you know. So we do associate it with lunar things like water and baths. So let's say like moving fluids in your body. That's why you'll see, you know, Scorpio moon women can struggle with um, thyroid endocrine problems, hormonal imbalances, brain chemistry imbalances, PCOS, you know, painful periods because something's moving around their body and it's at least it's not letting it and you know like Scorpio rules chemicals so like your brain chemistry your hormones etc and then we have mercury that also has to do with the mind you know very um like technical strategic uh, mercurial people always remind me of like military strategists chess players um and then also court jesters because they like to you know have fun play mercury is very you know well Mercury rules games, so a trickster, somebody mischievous, maybe they like pranks, they can have a lot of wit, they're, they, everything is a little bit nuanced with mercurial people, maybe knowing what they think, saying what they mean, it's like, well, why, why, why do I say what I mean, who cares, I'm just having fun, but they're the only ones who are in on their own jokes, so it's like very layered and multifaceted and quick and fast moving, and Mercury, of course, has a lot to do with expression. So this is where you see when these two come together, you get something quite unique for better or for worse. I'll give some examples as I always do. The other thing to note is Mercury is highly adaptive. This is why you'll see, you know, Virgo, Moon, Rising, Sun people and Gemini same are just really good at surviving because no matter what comes, they just manage. You know, they just like tick, tick, they make moves and they're able to move on. They adapt to survive. So you could throw them in any situation and they'll manage to get out with like minimal effort, minimal getting their hands dirty, but they just sort of like cleverly, like a fox, like very cunning. People who are very mercurial, you know, you could have very strong mercury, uh, very well aspected, very supported, brilliant intelligence. And they just are able to sort of be like, oh, how can I work this to my advantage? <laughs> how can I get the most out of this? Simple, you know, like not at the expense of others necessarily, but they're just good. They're good at finding ways. It, it rules merchants, you know, they're, they're mercantile. They're good at these things. And Mercury is also flexible. So naturally he rules mutable signs. He himself is a flexible planet. So whoever he sits with, he's going to mimic, you know, Mercury rules mimicry. As though actors have a strong Mercury or strong third house. You know, well, also his house of skill, of course. Mercury has a lot to do with that mental ability. So he'll start to mimic. So if he's with the sun, he could become more brilliant, a little bit, you know, um, hurt or irritated, let's say, burnt pretty much, like a little annoying, itchy sunburn, but bright, very, very bright person, good at advocating or something like that. Okay, if he's really, really close to Venus, still able to advocate, but maybe pleasant. Not so harsh, diplomatic, Venusian qualities. The moon is a very feminine celestial body. So we associate it with women, you know, being pregnant, our mothers, uh, water, flowing movement. It's curious. It likes to wander. It's, it's very flowing. It's not so forceful or, or straight. It's, it's got some kind of like, you know, poetic quality. It's nuanced as well. And so wherever the moon sits, if it sits with something, if, because Mercury's more times than not, will be with the sun, will be with Venus. He's rarely alone, right? He, he's very shifty, he moves very fast, so he's usually with something. Moon can be with something as well, of course, fastest, you know, every two and a half days, another, another uh, constellation. But <clears throat> it absorbs those qualities because it's like, it becomes impregnated with the essence 
So if you have moon with Saturn, you know, maybe a little bit of a serious person, you know, very, very real, very authentic, who doesn't like niceties. They're just like, what, what do you want, neighbor? Get off my lawn. Your dog always does their business there. We're not friends, you know, like maybe they're very upfront. <clears throat> moon with Mars, direct, you know, strong, willful, ambitious thinking, right? But then Moon with Venus. Moon with Venus is very happy. You know, it's got a lot of support. And Jupiter is like the best thing. Moon with Jupiter. Happy-minded people, whatever happens, they're like, blah. I think Taylor Swift has that and very good dignity in Cancer. So Jupiter exalted, Moon happy. And she wrote, sh she shakes it off. She, she makes some trouble. She gets in trouble. People bring her trouble, whatever. It doesn't matter. Dust it off. Just keep moving. Now, you take these two flexible planets. And they're both kind of similar in the sense that they, they will absorb whatever they sit with. They, they take in that beautiful, you know, essence of whatever they're sitting with for better or for worse. But if they're sitting together, now they're mimicking each other. They're absorbing from each other. So you get a very flexible, adaptable person. Hmm. Now, you can get someone with like a wicked sense of humor. And I mean wicked, like they could be pranksters, they can be downright annoying. <laughs> you know, they can be so convincing and they're persuasive. Their propensity to persuade someone can be so magnificent that they don't even realize they're doing it. This to me is the ultimate, you know, salesperson combination. And salespeople don't have good reputations. I'm not saying for good reason, I'm not saying for bad reason, but I think sometimes they convince themselves that they're really doing something good when they go around. Um, maybe sometimes they scheme people, you know, they're scammers, etc. But all these things are very possible because Moon and Mercury, you're gonna express those things and you're gonna always find ways to kind of like get your point across and get other people to see your point of view. And you can kind of like maneuver really, really well or outmaneuver others, which they don't really enjoy. So sometimes it can give the impression that the person isn't having genuine discourse, but the thing is they don't understand that they're not. A lot of the time they don't really get it. Now, when is this really good? It's really good not to get things. Let's be honest, it's really good not to get things. It's good not to be friends with reality if you're creative. So, authors. This is the number one combination for authorship. I don't care if you tweet, I don't care if you blog, write and publish books. You know, if these things are in, in good dignity and they're well supported, let's say there's something in the ninth house which rules publishing, well, everyone can write. But to be a published writer, to live off your work is rare. But if you see that, you think this is like one in a million. This person can make it and their head is full of stories, full of stories. They'll never run out of things to talk about. They'll never run out of ideas. You know, they're just like a self-powered battery. They'll just always have another. They'll always find another way. So it's magnificent. You can see incredible discourse, you know, wit, charm, conversational topics. They can have this capacity to magnetize people. You know, when they speak, like everyone listens and they're so drawn in, even if, it, if they're not a speaker by profession. So one of my favorite people, and certainly one of my father's favorite people, we watched a lot when I was growing up and certainly when he was growing up, is the former Cassius Clay, known as Muhammad Ali. He's a fighter, but what is he known for? He's known for his quotes, his witty banter. He was able to like market himself, to present himself, you know, he would say, float like a butterfly, sting like a bee. He was able to go on television shows and do interviews and talk about really uh, things outside of the scope of his profession. He was talking about social issues. He was talking about you know his role in society, other people's role in society, religion, philosophy, highly intelligent person, captivating, right? And charming. And depending on the sign, these people can exude charm and charisma that will make you swoon. You know, it's like this, heady perfume comes wafting through the air and you just like feel weak when they walk in the room because when they look at you and they have something to say, you feel like they were formulating it just for you. You're just captivated. It's almost like spellbinding. But people with strong mercuries generally, you know, like Hermes is hermetic, hermetic principles. They are spellbinding when they talk, but now you put it with the moon, it's a very, it can be a little bit of a mystical experience. It can be really, really something that, and you know, these people as well will have heightened nervous systems. 
so they have to take extra caution you know not to overstimulate themselves or understimulate themselves i always use the example of like a poodle <laughs> people who are very intelligent if they don't give themselves enough to do they'll just start gnawing through their arm or eating up all your shoes and destroying all the furniture in the house so you have to challenge yourself you can't be too lethargic weak-willed or lazy you really have to say okay i've been putting off going back to school but you've got to do it you know you're going to frustrate and resent yourself you have to give yourself some way to expend that mental energy it's got to go somewhere you will have it for the rest of your life amazing example amazing example is you know leonardo dicaprio he has moon mercury in the first house he's an actor this is awesome for actors so i would say like three a's okay artists authors actors and i would add activists because they speak you can get scientists you know you can get people very scientific minded detail oriented the sign and all these things have a lot to do with supporting but just in general you know people who act who express themselves who are in front of uh audiences cameras people who use the written word who use language who use nuance you know like micro expressions maybe people who work for you know um secret service agencies and, and they read like body language and things like that they're incredible for these things so of course you're gonna get an actor you know actually rosamund pike i believe i love her i love her she has moon mercury as well so these are amazing actors and i don't mean like they were in a hit show and it, or they were in a hit movie but they can't act their way out of a bag i'm not talking about success i'm talking about actual skill talent articulation like they are just you can't hold a candle to these people they're insanely good so he's got a lot to do with that plus it's in his first house and mercury is very strong in the first house so you're going to be marked by that that's your identity another thing is mercury rules you know youthfulness so somebody who can um, appear young or be young at heart or be attracted to that so clearly this person is very uh, very much you know in line with dating younger people that's one example another thing though about these people is that they're very chameleon like so i mentioned that they're very very changeable and look at some of the roles that he's he's played jordan belford who was like a famous scammer you know it's very fitting i think they have the same moon sign as well and um i think even the the real the real person from catch me if you can the famous famous con artist so he plays these people who are very changeable, who are very, you know, movable. I'm not saying these people are inherently deceptive. I'm saying they have a high threshold for being able to, you know, create a world within a world within a world. This is what makes them great writers and great creatives, for example, or scientists, because you have to believe in something before you can see it. That's how you discover it. But, you know, there's a great like mental cerebral aptitude to them. They're more often than not, they're highly, highly intelligent. Now, another one is madonna she has this combination in the first house in virgo so mercury is exalted and mercury is strong and she seems to have an obsession with you know young appearing young and also having younger partners as well and what's really remarkable is i remember growing up and, and people would always say she's a chameleon about her because they will say she's always changing her image and the first house is self-image and you have mercury moon in the first house very good dignity well you know that's what she did she adapted to survive her career had to take you know many shape many form in order for her to stay relevant and to keep being successful and she is undoubtedly successful she's very successful and very intelligent you know but she also has some stuff in the 12th house which shows a lot happens that we don't really see we don't really understand and certainly I believe a part of her brilliance and her success is down to her, you know, intelligence, but we don't even understand the full extent of just how clever and how brilliant this individual really is, you know, because we mentioned in, in the earlier video that the 12th house is a bit secretive. So it's just so fascinating what these people can produce, what they can make. Um, so very changeable. Now, speaking of changing appearance, one that is another really good example if you're familiar with rachel dolezal who was the i think head of the naacp in washington for the washington chapter for like a very short while it's a famous woman who had some fame 
uh, for presenting outside of her race. So basically, she was asked if she was white and she said, I don't understand the question, you know, and she's been a person who lived life as a black woman as best she could until it came out that actually she was biologically white. So the interesting thing is her combination is in the third house of expression. So she expressed this way. And um, it's in, I think it's in the sign of Sagittarius, which has to do with cultures. So cultures outside of your own. So, you know, she cultivated an image that she expressed of, you know, this culture that she wasn't inherently born into. I don't, I'm not saying it's right. I'm not saying it's wrong. I'm just letting you know she has moon, moon Mercury and it's someone who changes image who's very, very chameleon, who's very, very fluid in that sense. And they can uh, absorb, they become highly, uh, they have like a high, it's like a sponge. They're very much able to hold a lot of information, um, you know, a lot of knowledge and they just suck in whatever's around them. So they're always observing. So that's one thing is that if, if, you're, if you have a coworker <laughs> like this <laughs> or a boss, let's say that, you know, um, probably don't let them hear you gossip in the break room because they're going to hear and they're going to remember, right? If you have it, then I would say put your brilliance to work, you know, start writing, start blogging, start speaking, get a podcast, make an album, get into music, do something where you release all of that. Um, another thing is probably the bestest, which is I mentioned Mercury rules games, you know, and he's quite youthful. So these people, especially if it's well positioned, like the first house can age quite well, you know, and they can be very young at heart. They love playing. So they love to laugh. I mean, if you can, if you know someone like this, if you're married to someone like this, a big, big key to decoding that like cerebral sort of force field that's like impenetrable. And you're just like, how do I get to know you? How do I get to just like let your defenses down? It's just make them laugh. They love people who can just make them laugh, probably make them laugh more than they can make you laugh. They will love you forever. So I hope you've enjoyed this. Let me know what else you want to know about next and I'll see you next time on Guru Grit. Thank you so much. Bye bye.